The congregation became quiet as Pastor Nolan, their beloved spiritual leader, raised his hands in a final blessing. It was like any other Sunday service, one of hopeful smiles, whispered prayers, and the gentle strum of the guitar. But then, something unexpected happened. Police officers suddenly flooded the church with grim faces. Before anyone could react, they surrounded Pastor Nolan, who was looking at them with his eyes wide with shock. The church erupted in chaos, and confused shouts filled the air. What's going on? Why are they taking Pastor Nolan? Old people gasped, young couples held their children close, and the entire congregation was in fear. The cops read out the pastor's rights and his charges before handcuffing him. But in the commotion, the church members did not hear what was said. And just like that, their beloved Pastor Nolan, a man they trusted with their deepest secrets and prayers, was whisked away like a common criminal. What on earth could he have done to deserve this? The scene escalated quickly. Some parishioners who believed in their pastor's innocence tried to block the officers. A crowd quickly formed outside, and the officers' patrol cars were barricaded. The cops were forced to fire warning shots into the air to control the crowd, but it did little to calm the church members. SWAT teams were finally called in to handle the situation. They arrived and surrounded the building before going in with riot gear to secure the pastor. The SWAT team escorted him out of the church and put him in an armored car before zooming off. The event played out like an action movie, and the church was left reeling. Their beloved pastor was gone, and a dark cloud of uncertainty hung heavy in the air. The scene left everyone shaken, but none more so than 21-year-old Sam. Unlike most people who were simply confused, Sam was shaking in anger. Pastor Nolan wasn't just a respected figure to him, he was practically family. Sam, who had been raised by a single mother, had found a sense of belonging and purpose in the church community that Pastor Nolan had nurtured. The pastor wasn't just a preacher, he was a man of action. Even though the church was big with a lot of members and activities, Pastor Nolan always made time. He organized social programs and helped everyone he could. Pastor Nolan played the role of coach, confidant, and role model. He started a lacrosse team for boys like Sam, who were from single mother homes. With this, he offered them not just a sport, but a sense of camaraderie and mentorship. Pastor Nolan had always gone above and beyond, remembering birthdays, offering guidance, and filling the void of a missing father figure in Sam's life. This was what Sam desperately needed in his teens, and for that, he greatly admired the pastor. Seeing his beloved pastor hauled away like a common criminal was an insult to Sam. Pastor Nolan, the man who sealed the sick and brought hope to the lost, couldn't possibly be a criminal. There had to be some mistake. But the sight of SWAT teams swarming the place made it clear that this was no mistake. Pastor Nolan had been accused of something. This made Sam determined. He wouldn't let any lies or accusations against Pastor Nolan stand. He refused to believe his pastor was guilty. Led by his trust in the man's good deeds, Sam decided to take matters into his own hands. He decided to uncover the truth and prove Nolan's innocence with his own investigation. When Pastor Nolan arrived in town two decades ago, he was just a fresh face with just one companion by his side. Unlike his friend, who would become the town's most respected doctor, Pastor Nolan started with nothing but his unwavering faith and a warm smile. Yet that was all it took. He quickly ascended to the position of lead pastor at the small local church. Within two years, it was the biggest and most famous in the county. Pastor Nolan's charm was undeniable, and people flocked around him. His sermons were filled not just with faith, but with kindness and a deep understanding of human struggles. And his kindness extended far beyond the pulpit. He was a constant presence at community events, offering a warm hand and a listening ear to anyone in need. But the pastor was not only talk alone. Pastor Nolan spearheaded numerous social outreach programs. His initiatives tackled everything, from feeding the homeless to mentoring troubled youth. The town witnessed the positive impact firsthand, and their adoration for Pastor Nolan only grew stronger. He wasn't just a preacher, he was their shepherd, guiding them with compassion and unwavering dedication. But most of all, Pastor Nolan was known as a healer, a miracle worker. 
He was known to be able to heal the sick with nothing but constant prayer. All over town, almost everyone knew someone who had been healed from illness through Pastor Nolan's prayers. His charisma, kindness, and his ability to perform miracles and heal the sick in particular made the congregation love and adore him. The very next day after the arrest, Sam began his investigation. He started by discreetly asking around the church and throughout the town, hoping to find some details about the alleged crimes. If he could find out what the pastor was accused of, he could know how to prove him innocent. But shockingly, no one seemed to have a clue. Pastor Nolan was arrested right in front of the entire church, and no one in town knew why. Instead, everywhere Sam turned, all he heard were glowing testimonies about Pastor Nolan, about how he was a pillar of the community and a beacon of hope. Then there was Ophelia. Unlike the rest of the town, a Pastor Nolan's young secretary did not seem too thrilled about the pastor, or even phased by the arrest. In fact, Sam couldn't shake the feeling that she secretly smiled whenever the topic of Pastor Nolan's arrest was brought up. What did she know that everyone else didn't? This made Sam suspicious. He didn't know that it was possible for someone in the town to think differently of Pastor Nolan. This lack of information surrounding the charges were disturbing and it made Sam even more curious. So he shifted his focus to the beneficiaries of Pastor Nolan's miracles. He wanted to learn more about the pastor's good deeds, and who better to ask than those whose lives were miraculously transformed through his prayers. Sam started interviewing them one by one. At first, the story seemed heartwarming. The terminally ill regaining their health, the downtrodden finding renewed purpose, and sad homes getting back together. But as Sam met more people, he noticed a troubling pattern, especially among those who were healed from sickness. Even though each story was different, it had the same core structure. A family member got sick with an illness similar to other cases. They got desperate and then Pastor Nolan intervened. After his prayer, they made a donation to the church and, like a miracle, they got healed instantly. Some families even used up their savings to make these donations before they got well. A seed of doubt began to sprout in Sam's mind. Why did all of them have to make donations, some in large amounts before the prayers worked? Was there more to these miracles than met the eye? These all became a little bit fishy to Sam, and there was even something more disturbing. While many of the sick people recovered, quite a few of them actually died even though Pastor Nolan had prayed with them. This only made Sam twice more suspicious. He decided to dig deeper, specifically into the stories of those who passed away, even after Pastor Nolan's prayers. One family name kept cropping up as he asked questions, the Harrisons. Sam knew they used to be active church members, and they were always present at services and events. But after their wife and mother died, the Harrisons abruptly stopped coming altogether. Sam decided that was where he would visit next. Perhaps he wouldn't find just answers, but the truth. Sam tracked down their address with Ophelia's help and arrived at their home on the outskirts of town. It was a modest home, nothing compared to the mansion they once lived in. Sam hesitantly rang the doorbell, and an old-looking man with haunted eyes answered. The older man seemed uninterested in what the younger man had to say until Sam mentioned Pastor Nolan's name. The man's face twisted into a frown, but there was pain in his eyes. It was as if the mere mention of the pastor's name was like a stab in the back. The man was Mr. Harrison, and he reluctantly allowed Sam inside. There, Sam met Mr. Harrison's kids, who were now young adults. Their home felt devoid of warmth, and it reflected in the despair on Mr. Harrison's face. Mr. Harrison should be in his late 50s, but his sadness made him look like a 70-year-old man. Sam offered his condolences for the passing of Mrs. Harrison, even though she had passed away more than 10 years ago. He was blessed that the family who had shunned everyone were willing to talk to him, and they told him a truly tragic story. Mrs. Harrison was a vibrant woman in her late 30s, and she had been a devoted follower of Pastor Nolan right from when he became pastor of the church. Years later, she fell gravely ill from a wasting illness. The pastor became a constant presence in her life, and he regularly visited their home to offer prayers and unwavering support. The family was worried about her health as medical treatments did not seem to work. 
They clung to hope, and with every visit and every fervent prayer, the Harrisons believed in the healing power of Pastor Nolan's interventions, but their hope turned to despair as Mrs. Harrison's condition worsened, and tragically, she succumbed to the illness. The revelation that followed sent a shiver down Sam's spine. The Harrisons discovered a shocking twist in her will. While she was ill, Mrs. Harrison, who was completely devoted to Pastor Nolan, had rewritten her will. She left the family's entire fortune inherited from her own family. Their house, their off-state properties, their savings, even her husband's assets that were in her name, to the church. But this act of faith had not saved her life. Instead, as soon as she passed away, it plunged her family from a position of comfort to the harsh reality of struggling to make ends meet. Of course, the matter was taken to court, but it seemed everyone, from the local police to the courts, backed the famous pastor Nolan. The Harrisons were painted as greedy people who wanted Mrs. Harrison's money, especially because Mrs. Harrison was the source of the family's wealth, not Mr. Harrison. The family quit the church and moved to a poorer home. Mr. Harrison choked back tears as he began to reveal something he had always wanted to share. It was something about Pastor Nolan that had been planted in his mind just before his wife's passing. But before he could elaborate on it, the other family members rushed in and silenced him with panicked glances. The message was clear. Some truths were better left buried. As Sam left their home, he was terrified. Even more troubling was the fact that this wasn't an isolated incident. There were four other families who had experienced something identical. Two of them had moved out of town. Sam started piecing together a disturbing pattern. Several rich church members who were fervent followers of Pastor Nolan had fallen ill under mysterious circumstances. Then they had either donated significant sums to the church and recovered, or they'd died, leaving their wealth to the church. The more Sam investigated, the darker the picture became. The once beloved Pastor Nolan now appeared to have a lot of skeletons in his cupboard, and his miracles seemed to be hiding a dirty web of exploitation. Sam finally sought out Ophelia, the pastor's odd secretary. He knew she knew something about what was truly going on. When he met her, she was stoic as usual, even as Sam presented her with his disturbing findings. Unlike before, this time, Sam was ready for the truth. To his surprise, Ophelia didn't deny anything he said. Instead, she took a deep breath and began to speak, and what she had to say was truly horrifying, but it was the truth. Pastor Nolan wasn't a healer or a miracle worker, he was a poisoner. This revelation shocked Sam and his mouth fell wide open as he listened. For years, Pastor Nolan had been secretly lacing the communion wine with a slow-acting poison and using it to target select church members. The miracles, the sudden illnesses and recoveries were all part of an orchestrated performance. When the poorer people that Nolan targeted became sick from the poison, they became desperate and more vulnerable. Then Pastor Nolan intervened and asked them to make donations before their prayers were answered. After they had made the donations, he would slip the antidote into the communion wine and they would miraculously recover. For the wealthy members, the poison caused illness fueled their fear and dependence on the pastor. While they were weakened, Pastor Nolan easily persuaded them to donate massive sums to the church. Some of them, like Mrs. Harrison, were made to rewrite their wills, leaving their fortunes to the church. These unlucky ones never received the antidote, and they met a sad fate. But how could something so heinous go undetected for so long? Ophelia revealed the sickening truth. The town sheriff, the local council, and even the courts were all in Nolan's pocket. Years of manipulation had woven a web of corruption, ensuring his dark deeds remained concealed. The sheriff and the council ignored any whispers of wrongdoing, and the courts dismissed any cases brought against the famous pastor. And Sam knew all this to be true. The town's doctor, the man who conducted autopsies and gave out medical checkups, was the same man who came into town with Pastor Nolan 20 years ago. The beloved pastor, it seemed, had built his empire on a foundation of lies and deceit. Sam was livid. For most of his life, he had trusted Pastor Nolan and took him as a second father, yet he had spent time with a monster all this time. 
The pastor had hurt so many people for so long, yet everyone saw him as a saint. But not anymore. Ophelia might be content with Pastor Nolan's arrest, but Sam wanted to expose the truth about Nolan to the congregation. But he didn't know how to do that. How would he make the church members even listen to him? These people strongly believed the pastor was a blameless and righteous man who was God sent. Even Sam himself believed the same, and he had to do a serious investigation to change his state of mind. It was going to be hard to convince the whole congregation that Nolan was evil especially people who had tried to stop armed cops from arresting the pastor. But Sam was in luck. Ophelia told him that the police would be coming back to the church. The cops decided to reveal the shocking secret themselves at the next Sunday gathering. The next Sunday, Sam watched as the police public relations officers took center stage in front of the congregation. Pastor Nolan sat behind them but was surrounded by heavily armed SWAT guards. Sam had prepared himself to witness the congregation's shock at the revelation of Pastor Nolan's crimes, but instead, he was the one to be shocked. The officers announced the shocking crime the famous pastor had committed. Apparently, after their investigation, they had uncovered some… unsavory dealings. Pastor Nolan had been involved in bribery. He'd been influencing elections, taking bribes from politicians to get the town to vote for select candidates. Pastor Nolan said nothing and stared at them with a blank look on his face. As the crowd heard the news, they began to murmur in disappointment, but nowhere near the outrage Sam expected. Even faced with this offense, the congregation still seemed hesitant to truly believe their beloved pastor could be capable of such corruption. But the final nail in the coffin was when the cops announced that Pastor Nolan would be released soon. He had claimed to use the bribes to help the church's poor, so he was to pay a fine instead. Sam's mouth fell open. That was all? From the looks of it, these cops didn't know about Nolan's real crimes. They were not from the sheriff's office, but from the city. They were about to let a monster walk free with just a slap on the wrist. Just bribery? Sam began as he stood up and shouted above the hushed whispers. That's not all, he shouted. Pastor Nolan was poisoning you. Everywhere immediately became silent, and all eyes turned to Sam. Some people were confused, while some were disappointed in him for speaking evil of their pastor. How dare he question their faith in a man who for decades had been their spiritual anchor? But Sam did not back down. He took a deep breath and continued. He turned his attention to the cops and recounted his investigation. He talked about these suspicious sicknesses, the deaths, the Harrison story, the pattern of illness and secret donations. He spoke of Ophelia's confession and told them about the slow-acting poison and the communion wine. With each detail, the faces in the crowd began to shift. Their disbelief turned into horror as the truth settled in. Sam pointed a finger at the now sweating Nolan and concluded, Nolan wasn't a healer. He was a predator. He exploited their faith and their trust for his own gain. The crowd began to shout in anger as they all felt betrayed. Accusing fingers replaced the adoration that once filled the room. The once famous pastor now sat exposed, a shell of the charismatic leader they'd known. The police were completely stunned by the revelation. They never knew the extent of the pastor's crimes. They quickly handcuffed Nolan and led him out of the church. This time, no one tried to stop them. Ophelia's testimony, along with Sam's evidence and explanation of the unexplained deaths, left no room for doubt. The corrupt network that had shielded Nolan for so long began to crumble down. Nolan's doctor fled the town, but the sheriff and council members were arrested. Other doctors started cooperating with the investigation, and they revealed that many more people were still sick from Nolan's poison. Justice, though delayed, was finally served. Pastor Nolan faced the consequences of his crimes, and his empire of lies brought crashing down. Ophelia testified against him, and he was sentenced to life imprisonment. His church was closed down, and what remained of the stolen funds were given back to their rightful owners. Sam was shaken by the ordeal, yet he stood tall. He was proud to tell the truth, even though it shook everyone's faith. But Sam decided not to end it there. He collaborated with authority to make sure that all the good parts of Nolan's church were continued. That way, Nolan's evil deeds would not stop good from continuing. This is a reminder that even the holiest of institutions could harbor darkness. 
Do you think Nolan's good deeds were enough to forgive his crimes? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.